Good morning again. This is part two of how to learn QImage from the point of view is I just bought it and what do I do now? Because that's what we're really faced with. In the previous uh, chapter, I showed you what to expect when you turned your screen on. You get four by six default templates so that if you put a picture in here, you're going to get four by six like that. Ah, but it isn't 4 by 6. It's 4 by 4.92 and the reason for that is because I cropped it. Okay? And that's what I happened to end up with. Just just like that. See it? 4.92 by 4. See the white label that jumped out? Okay. That's fine. That's the way I want it. But if I want a complete 4 by 6 to fill out a sheet of 4 by 6 paper, I have to select this, see my green dots, and hit the automatic crop scissor, and now I have 4 by 6. Okay, that's a little refresher. By the way, if you don't want 4 by 6 to be your default, it's very easy to change. I can show you how to change that in one second, okay? So we'll pick, let's say, for example, 8 by 10. We'll go over here to this padlock, Unlock it, okay, click it again. It says you want the previous settings or current. If I say current, next time I open Q image, it'll be 8 by 10. Okay, that's pretty easy. Okay, so now we're going to make a print. So let's take our flower, add it to the queue. We have an 8 by 10 because we have the crop scissor on, and now we want to make a print. Okay, off we go to the Printer and Settings tab because we have to set that up properly. I want to preface this by saying this is QImage Ultimate. And I'm not patting anybody on the back. Those of you that have used QImage for years and years and years, you know why you use it. It's the best program there is, period. And I know you have Photoshop, you have Lightroom, and you still have QImage. Why? Because it's the best program going. Okay? So I'm not going to show you any way to print half-measure pictures with, you know, improper settings or careless settings. I'm going to show you the right way. Okay? So let's take our printer. Now, there are many brands. There are many models. I'm not going to cover them here. If you want to see how to do Canons and Epsons and HPs and everything, I suggest that you go to the QImage forum and go to QImage Ultimate Challenges, find challenge number 76, and play the video and read the text. And you'll be an expert in no time. But for the sake of this video, I just got my Q image, and what do I do now? We're going to go through this as commonly and easily as we can. So the first thing we want to do is pick our printer. Now we just open this, okay? Now I've got 37 printer drivers installed. I have that for trying to accommodate questions that arise, and I try to emulate what they're doing and see what kind of results I get. But you probably have one or two in your list of printers. So pick your printer. Mine is a Pro 100. Okay. Next is the kind of paper. Well, the easiest thing to do, really, is when you're starting out, use the paper that belongs to the brand of printer. If you have an Epson, use an Epson paper. If you have a Canon, use Canon paper. This takes a lot of the fuss out of it. If you get Hannah Mueller paper or Ilford or Red River or something, they're wonderful papers, but you have to use a little more tender loving care. So we're going to stick with this because this is a basic video. Okay, so we've got semi-gloss. I could have picked, you know, uh, glossy, uh, luster, <clears throat> excuse me, or any other kind of paper, but for the sake of uh, the video, we have to pick something. So we've got semi-gloss. What size? Okay, the size, it can be whatever size paper you bought. It could be 5 by 7, 
eight and a half by eleven is the letter size. We have uh, A3. We have thirteen by nineteen. We got even larger than that. But for the sake of the video, we're going to stick with letter size. Okay. Now here's the important part. Up at the top, right up here. Okay. It says page one of one. That means you only have one page in use in the queue. But look at this. 8.000 by 10.685 inches. What that means is that that is the printable area of your 8.5 by 11 paper. That means from left to right, 8.5 inch page, you can only print 8 inches worth. And top to bottom, on an 11 inch sheet, you can only print 10.685 inches worth. Okay? This is important. Because so many times uh, people think they're going to get an eight eight by eleven and a half uh, eight and a half by eleven picture. It can be done, but uh, this is normal. Okay. Now let's go here, and I'm going to say this is the page editor. It's not the image editor. The page editor. We're going to click on it because I want to show you what we're looking at. Here's our flower, here's our page, eight and a half by 11 sheet, and these are the margins that QImage is showing you. From left to right, we've got a quarter inch on either side. Well, eight plus a quarter and a quarter is eight and a half. Got it? The top and bottom, it's uh, a half inch on each side, so that's 11 down to 10 points up in the row, okay? Whatever it turns out to be without the arithmetic being fancy. So that you get the idea of what the printable area means, okay? That's that's why I'm showing you this. Okay, back we go here. The next is the location of where you feed the paper in the printer. The canon says rear tray. It, actually, it's the they call it the rear tray, but it's the front feed. <laughs> the portrait doesn't mean anything. It's just showing you the orientation of the image on your page like that, or the orientation of the page, I should say. The next one is the profile. Now, today's printers come with profiles. Even the inexpensive ones, the I've even seen profiles with the three-in-ones, you know, the, the scanner and the fax machine and the copy machine and everything rolled into one, and they still have profiles. So profiles is now becoming accepted. In QImage Ultimate, it always was required, okay? So we go here, and we open this little button up, like that, and it says, Choose New Profile. Now, I've got it all set up, but if you do that, and you click here, it'll take a moment or two to find everything, but what it's going to do is show you a whole list of profiles, okay? Now, in, in the case when you're first starting out, it probably says, let the uh, printer manage color or something like that. We don't want that, okay? We just don't want that. What we want is for you to pick the proper, proper profile. Well, this thing opened up on the Canon Pro 100, and all we had to do was find the proper paper that matches the paper we chose, okay? That's not that hard. Now, Canon is the hardest one. They got crazy numbers and signs and settings and whatnot. Just go by the name, find your paper. Okay? Now, this one and two here become significant later on. So I'm just pointing it out to you. Okay, let's go. We open. And I use relative colorimetric. We'll explain that at another time. And we say okay. All right? Now, the next thing we need to do is go into the properties box. You're only going to do this once for this particular paper and this particular printer. So it sounds a little tedious at the moment, but we'll show you. You'll love it. Okay, we're going to click on the word properties, and the driver opens up. Hmm, that's neat. So in here, all we want to do is make sure it says photo printing. Now, when you click on that, for some reason, this borderless check comes in there. Take it out. Okay, then we look here, make sure we have the right paper. Well, this says Pro Platinum N. Okay, well, I think we got that, did we? 
See, it says semi-gloss here. How do we get pro flow? Well, that's why we're going into the the uh, driver to make sure everything is right. Now, now it says semi-gloss. Okay, custom. Now, this may say high quality. It may say something else. Just ignore it for the moment. Okay. The next thing we want to do is make sure the paper size is right. It is. Make sure the source is where you're going to put the paper into the printer is right. It is. So now we'll go to the main tab. And here, if it says high, no matter what it says, click on custom. Set. And you pull this slider all the way to the right for the best quality. That was the one, two numbers you saw in that profile. The paper determines where you can go with this thing, okay? So you push it always to the right, the highest quality, say OK. Now here comes the tricky one. It's usually on auto. You switch it to manual. You say set, okay? And the next thing you do is you click matching. Matching gives you three choices and you always choose none, okay? It says none, okay? Okay, again, we're done. Now, what did none mean? None means you're telling the driver, look, I have Q-Image. I have a profile from Canon. I have the right paper. Don't mess with the colors. This is what I want. What I send you is what I want you to print. And don't do any adjusting. Don't do any interfering. Just print what I send you. That's what the word none means, okay? That's about it on that. The rest of it takes care of itself. Uh, you'll get your PPI reading. This is for posters, and it's cut in half because posters are so huge, they don't really need, you know, maximum PPI. Interpolation is by default fusion, the best there is. And this one we'll explain at another time when we get into little details and things. Just leave it on the default five. And now we're ready to print. Okay, turn on the printer, let her get warmed up a little bit, and then we go right up here to this button here, it says print, okay, and we say okay, and that's all there is to it, okay? It's very, very simple once you get it set, but I want to show you something else before we close out the video. <clears throat> now that we have everything set, we go over to here to this little box that says save. Okay, I could also go here to the same thing as here, save. Okay, I click it like that. I get this box. I want the P for printer. That's very important. Okay, as a matter of fact, I have set as default. I right clicked, set as default. So when this box opens, it's always on the P. Okay, and now I'm going to give this thing a name. I'm going to call it. Canon semi semi gloss okay 8.5 by 11 and that's all I need I don't need any more and say save okay now I've done this before so I'm not uh, going to save it again I'll show you let's cancel let's mess this up Okay, just to show you what it's doing. Uh, let's see. Let's mess it up. Let's give you some kind of a oh, uh, four by six. Okay, We've got a four by six, and let's take um, let's, see, let's take a smaller print size because it's telling me that my print is too big. Okay, there we go. That's four by six. Okay, and now I'm going to go back in here again. I'm going to recall, okay, or I can go here and recall like that. Save printer settings. I go find the one I just did, which is the uh, semi gloss. Okay, here we go. Semi gloss, see it? 13 by 19, and we also have the 8 by 10. If I click on that, Canon Profile 8x10 Semi-Gloss. Open. Bingo! Everything went back to where it was before. Semi-Gloss 8.5x11, the proper profile, 
all set. So that's why we save them, and then you don't have to do this over again. Okay, hang on, and we'll see if there's anything else I need to touch on. Okay, um, one other thing occurred to me I better point out, and that is we go back into that driver again. And if you remember, we had the paper selected, we had the quality selected, the size selected, the location of the feed into the printer. That's good. We went here, we set the quality as high as we can go, and we turned off the printer interfering with our prints. Okay? There's one more thing I want to point out, and that's page setup. No matter which printer you have, no matter what brand or regardless, this is very important. Here is the paper size, 8.5 by 11. Over here it says, it's kind of grayed out, it says same as paper size. If it says anything other than that, you screwed up. You've got something that's enlarging or shrinking the print internally in this driver. Okay, you did fit, fit the page, you did scaled, you did borderless, you did something else. Okay, so this must say same as page size. Okay, it must. I don't care if it's an Epson or what it is, it says the same thing. Very important. No scaling. Just make your print. Later on, if you want to learn scaling, we'll get to that. But right now, this is very important. Okay, gang. I hope you're getting the hang of your Q image. It is scary. It does have a big learning curve. As you'll see later on, we'll go ahead and we'll show you some of the tricks of the trade. But right now, I want you to enjoy your first few prints on Q image. And thank you very much for spending some time with me. Bye now.